Hi, my name's Bob Greenier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So what we are looking at here is the computer uh, interface for the ReliaScan 701. And yesterday I showed you the uh, beta background measurement and also uh, when it's got the cover on in this state, this is actually measuring gamma in the background as well. So this kind of gives you your overall sort of background. And then what you do is you switch this to measurement plus background and you remove the cover from the, um, the GM pancake and it measures the, uh, this minus the, kind of the background or gives you some indication of that. Now what you can see up here is where uh, I had the measurement result for just the uh, background and it gave me, uh, what was it, 10.29 uh, 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 per centimeter squared per minute on average for a sample of two hours. And uh, I think that um, that is a plus or minus 3%. And with the plate removed, what you see is 10.81 uh, 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 with a variation of 3.6%. Um, uh, with the background at 10.29. So there's a, a slight increase with the cover removed and that's not surprising. And so we're going to have a look what the cover removed uh, looks like and uh, uh, other control that we will do now. So the cover you can see is here and uh, that has uh, these arrows on it. You might have seen it on the interface. Um, however, when that's removed, you can see that the pancake is exposed uh, just behind that uh, kind of grill. And obviously this uh, uh, has less of an effect on beta particles. Uh, so lower energy beta particles can get in there. Now we do have a risk that the port from the reactor itself, this little bit here, here, um, actually fires out sometimes hot carbon pieces and we don't want that to interact with the um, uh, pancake mylar uh, causing it to damage and so we we do have to think about how we're going to get around that so it might be that we have to have some kind of um, film in front of there and that will attenuate uh, any beta particles so could we use this film? Because actually what we're looking for is, uh, and you'll see this in the main justification video, is what we're actually looking for is the highest energy uh, beta particles that will come out of the uh, carbon and the potassium if we are looking at reverse uh, beta reactions, um, uh, neutrino driven reactions, uh, and that will mean that they are at the high end of the energy. So it might not be a bad thing to have some discrimination for low energy, but maybe we don't want this. Maybe we'd want something, I don't know, like uh, something that's uh, like paper or something. Uh, and we need to run a couple of tests to see that the paper's not going to be ignited, but we do want to see if we can protect the mylar on that. Anyway, so the next control test that I want to run is to have the fan on because Can suggested, and quite rightly, um, that when this is on, it'll blow dust around and the dust might have uh, particles of uh, uh, radon in it or, uh, or radon progeny and that this could then settle on the GM uh, uh, pancake and cause a change in counts. So... It's going to sound like this when we turn it on. We have our remote, which we showed here before. Uh, so we turn on the remote. And it gets quite loud. And there is quite a bit of airflow underneath here. And so this is a legitimate concern. I'm going to turn this off so I can speak. <laughs> so um, there is airflow. So we may consider, actually, because the, the thing that we're interested in calling is the magnetron itself. And so we may consider putting some deflectors here so that there is not a lot of air particles going over here. The actual reality is, though, that the um, the, react the experiments can only last for three to five minutes. Three Because uh, it needs long enough to actually do something useful, it needs to be over three minutes. But you don't really want it running too long because... Um, there is some reflection back into the waveguide and into the magnetron and uh, this can blow the magnetron up and we want to try and avoid doing that. So 
Uh, we'll do a couple of trial runs and just see if we can get the plasma going on a reasonably uh, uh, reliable basis and, and then see if we are producing any uh, so-called magnetized particles, uh, which is a reasonable sign that something interesting is going on. And we will uh, then see if uh, it makes any difference uh, shielding that. So uh, we've got uh, the control to do now, um, and I will share the data on the blog on uh, quantumheat.org. And if you have any suggestions for other controls um, to do with the beta detection, please put your suggestions there.